sounds fast, doesn't it? I mean, who doesn't like the sound of a disc wheel? But is it really making me any faster? Is a disc wheel really worth it? When it comes to upgrading a bike, the wheels are often regarded as the biggest upgrade you can do. And for good reason. The wheels carry the rotating weight of the bike. So, making lighter wheels makes for a lighter overall weight and a lighter, better feel for the bike. Then, of course, you upgrade the stiffness and you're going to get better power transfer and better efficiency. And then, of course, there's the aero gains. While a deeper section wheel might actually have a bit of a weight penalty attached to it, that's offset by the significant aerodynamic advantage, which is why you see so many deep section wheels at the races. The idea being that a deeper section wheel allows the air to stick to the wheel for a bit longer, meaning a smaller area of turbulence in the middle of the wheel and therefore less drag. And less drag means faster speeds for the same effort or less effort for the same speed, which is pretty significant for us cyclists and triathletes. So surely that means a disc wheel is the ultimate. It is obviously the deepest profile, therefore the smoothest airflow over the wheel and mean it's got to be the fastest option. Well, is it? I mean, with that extra material, that's surely going to mean added weight. And let's not forget the price tag that comes with most of these disc wheels. Is that extra cost even worth it for any potential time saving? Well, I guess that is the million dollar question, isn't it? And guess what? I'm here to try and answer it for you today in typical GTN does science style. So to help us with today's video, DT Swiss have kindly armed me with a wide range of their wheels. At one end of the spectrum, I have a relatively standard, low profile aluminium wheel set, the PR 1600 spline designed for all round use. They're a solid wheel set, good for everyday use and essentially marking our baseline for today's experiment. Stepping up from those though and into the DT Swiss Aero Garage, I have the ARC 1100 Diker 80 wheel set. A wheel set many of you will recognize from the pro ranks. These are 80 millimeter depth, both front and rear, and come complete with ceramic bearings to reduce resistance further. They also weigh an impressive 1,472 grams for the whole wheel set. But then the wheel we're all here for, the ARC 1100 die cut disc wheel. This is a brand spanking new wheel and essentially completes the DT Swiss Aero lineup. It's been engineered and built in house and aerodynamically optimized by the clever folk over at Swiss side. This disc wheel is actually composed of eight equally sized and symmetrically aligned glued carbon pieces. And apparently the woven carbon layup along with an ultralight foam plate inside gives the wheel exceptionally high lateral and torsional stiffness. All in all, it weighs an impressive 1100 grams, making it one of the lightest tubeless clincher disc wheels for disc brake bikes. Oh, and it comes with different colored decals. I chose gold, obviously. But more importantly, how does it compare? Right then, let's get sciencey. Starting with good old fashioned TT and then into a bit of a hill climb. Whoa, 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 mock, 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 listen. We need to take the science up a level or three on this channel. So uh, I've come with this Pito AeroTube sensor and we're going to attach that to your bike. We're going to track some of your uh, real-time drag data while you do these experiments. So first, I'm going to get you to take these fancy wheels off and put the uh, low-profile uh, wheels on so that we can get a bit of a baseline data. We're going to get this thing set up and then we're going to take the low profile wheels off, put on the ARC 1100 dark cut 80 millimeter wheels, do a couple of tests on that, and then we'll whack that uh, brand new ARC 1100 disc on there, the bad boy. Okay, and boss. See how good that is. All right, what's the plan then? What are the tests? What's the course? Well, I have devised, using my science, three, three tests. So we're going to do a 6K time trial with very little elevation gain on all three wheel sets. Then we're going to do a hillier route where we can see what happens when your speed slows a little bit, but it's not that hilly, so you'll be able to keep some speed. So then we've thrown in a third one where your speed's really going to drop, unless you've got a lot of power on those legs, and we'll see what happens to your aerodynamics 
when uh, there's not so much speed involved. But let's install this. Okay, so for these tests or these runs, I've got to do 3K out, 3K back, holding a constant speed for each. So I'm going for around 40 kilometers an hour, but the main thing is holding the same speed for each of the runs. Starting with the shallow wheels. Here we go. Cool. So first wrap down with the shallow wheels and interesting results, but I'm not going to tell you yet because we're going to switch over the wheels and I'll let you know at the end. Right now for the deep section 80s. Let's go. definitely felt faster. All right, time to change that rear wheel out. Get the disc on. <laughs> Mate, what took you so long? I thought the wheel was supposed to be fast. All right, easy now. You're coming from the guy wearing a lab coat at a cafe. Meh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, where's my I coffee anyway? Probably didn't need the lab coat. We haven't done too much uh, messy work today, but we've got some numbers. Uh, well, first of all, let me tell you how it felt. So yeah. uh, the shallow wheels, obviously fine. When I put the deeper wheels on, I, I actually felt a significant difference. Uh, there was actually a little bit of a lump on the flat TT and I just also felt little things like I just held that speed into that a little bit more when on the shallow wheels I felt I had to get up out of the saddle quickly I just held the speed through that lump and didn't need to at all um, put the, the disc wheel on um, I didn't really notice anything it, it sounded fast it does sound good doesn't yeah, it yeah but so I'm really interested to know what the numbers is. well we crunched the numbers I think you're probably going to find that the difference with that shallow wheel set was that there were also a heavier wheel set which is going to make a big difference and the disc is not really a much of a weight difference before from the, the deeper ones but let's look at your numbers you see so you you've got my numbers already oh yeah look it's already uploaded what, what i mean what do you think I do, what do you think the lab coat's for science baby science. okay come on then okay so on the standard wheels you had a well you had a very good job all the way around because you held 40 k's an hour for all your runs nice at least you did something right standard wheels cda coefficient of drag was uh, 0.259 at an average of 255 watts which is solid deep wheels so this is where you saw the big difference cda down to 0.24 which is a significant improvement of 0 0.19 0 0.019 in your drag uh, and only 247 watts for the same speed oh, so a big improvement there. yeah all right so that's three watts I right there yeah. And then the disc wheel you put on, uh, you went three watts less for the same speed. So uh, again, a slight improvement in your CDA uh, and free speed, basically. Well, you know what? I'm actually quite pleased with this because DT Swiss found in the wind tunnel a 1.8 watt saving when they went from the deep wheels to the deep front with the disc in the rear. I was three watts, so pretty close. Yeah, better saving in the real world than they got in the wind tunnel. And, and I, know, I know this sounds ridiculous uh, about the sound of a disc wheel, but I genuinely find it quite motivating. <laughs> I don't know what other, maybe I'm just weird, but I'd imagine sort of over a 90K, 180K, just hearing that, it sound, it genuinely sounds fast. Yeah, well, that's the thing. 
psychologically affect, you know, of, of the science hat on here. You look good, you feel good, you sound good, you feel good, apparently. Wow. Well, yeah, we know that a disc wheel is a no-brainer for a flat course. We pretty much knew that already. Now it's time to find out if it's still got those same gains on a slightly hillier course. So I'm gonna order another cup of coffee and do some more sciencing while Mark does some more riding. Here we go. Off you go, mate. So this time James has asked me to hold 400 watts for each of the runs. So pretty tall ass, but I'll do my best job. And then I guess see what speed and time each of those runs produces. Let's do this. Run two, here we go. Okay, let's see what the disc wheel's got on this climb, and my legs for that matter. Here we go. Okay, first set of hills done. Uh, that was tough. I managed to hold just shy of 400 watts on each of the runs, uh, but nice and even across the board. In terms of times, we went 3.30 with the shallow wheels, 3.20 with the deep wheels, and then 3.22 with the disc wheel on the rear. So a big jump up when I went from the shallow to the deep, but then actually an ever so slight decrease with the disc wheel, but more or less the same, very, very close. Now I managed to hold an average speed of 24 to 25, kilometers an hour. So I guess we saw that benefit from the aerodynamics when we went to the deeper wheels. Um, and interestingly, even with the disc wheel on and that weight penalty, it pretty much was the same. So now we've got a steep hill. James sent me this location and it, oh my goodness, it's, it's like a wall. I guess trying to hold a similar power again, uh, around 400 mark, but may even need more to get up over this thing. It's not as long, um, but nonetheless, trying to hold the same across all three runs. Okay, here we go. This is gonna hurt. Run one, oh, done. Back down, change the wheels. Oh, thanks, James. Oh, goodness. There we go, final one. Woo! What a day. All right, I need to get my breath out, but not quite as high of power on those three runs as I was hoping. I thought I'd be 400 watts and above, but um, I was around 390 to 393, so only three watts in it, nice and even across the board. Um, so I went 224 with the shallow wheels, 223 with the deep wheels and then 228 with the disc wheel. So slowest with the disc wheel. 
Um, now I did actually kind of notice the difference with the disc wheel on this one, just that added weight. Now this is really interesting because my average speed was around 12 kilometers an hour across the runs. So I guess here we've kind of found that tipping point where weight becomes more of a factor than aerodynamics. Now interestingly, the shallow wheels, whilst they were shallower, they're actually aluminum, so they're relatively heavy for shallow wheels. So similar weight to the deep section wheels. So didn't see much of a difference there, um, but yeah, with the disc wheel, those aero gains of the disc wheel definitely weren't felt on this climb. Now, unless you're doing a course like Alpe d'Huez, where you're literally doing a huge summit, um, then I've got to say, it's rare that you're going to find yourself in circumstances like this. Pretty much say, in most cases, those flat sections and the gains you make on that will far outweigh some of these sort of climbs like this. But I hear what you're thinking though, what about the crosswinds though and the comfort when riding with a disc wheel? And you're absolutely right, this is a really common concern when it comes to riding with a disc wheel. It is obviously a larger surface area ready to catch the wind like a sail, which is in essence what they're designed to do. So much so that they are actually banned on some courses such as the Ironman World Championship course out in Kona where it is notoriously windy due to safety concerns. Then on the comfort side of things, because it is essentially one solid piece of material. It's thought that you could feel the vibrations up from the road, through that wheel and into the frame, which can tire you out. Well, that's where things have evolved a little actually, due to the popularity of disc brakes, brands have been able to do away with the rim braking surface. And that has meant that they've been able to optimize the profile of the disc wheel and therefore the way in which the airflow interacts with it. And obviously it's aerodynamics. The other, and is the case in DT Swiss's disc wheel is that they've been able to increase the inner rim width. In this instance, up to 20 mil for that inner rim width. And that's meant that it's compatible with 25 to 32 mil tires. This one is actually optimized for 28 mil. And they may have you scratching your head, a 28 mil tire, that's not very aero, but because it's on the rear, it has less of an aero penalty. But more importantly, due to the increased volume of a 28 mil tire, it actually has a few additional key benefits. They can be ridden at a lower tire pressure without risking a pinch flat. And then this lower tire pressure can also reduce rolling resistance. And that larger air volume acts like more of a cushion to vibrations and impacts from the road. Well, there's a good reason why almost all pros are always opt for a disc wheel should they have the choice. And I think we showcased that pretty well today. They, they're fast. And they've come on a lot over the years. I think some of the concerns that perhaps many of us had a handful of years ago, they've been answered. The only big outstanding question is the cost. There's no escaping this one. They're not cheap. In fact, they're relatively expensive. In some cases, you'll pay as much for a single disc wheel as you can for a top of the range wheel set. And obviously you've still got to buy a front wheel. But like I say, they're fast. So I think We'll leave the decision as to whether they're worth it up to you and based on your circumstances. Obviously, we're very lucky today. We were gifted this wheel by DT Swiss and I'm going to be making good use of it. In fact, I think I might enter a TT and show it off tonight. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it?